difference quotients. For a function f, so we see a function here, a difference quotient is the ratio that represents the average rate of change of the function on the interval from a to x. So this function is defined on that interval from a to x on the x-axis here. The difference quotient would represent the slope of this secant line. So this green line is secant to the curve because it intersects the curve at two places. The slope of this secant line represents the average rate of change of the function itself. This is the symbol we're going to use. It's an f with a bar on top of it, a subscript of a, which represents the beginning of the interval, and the independent variable is x, which represents the end of the interval, and the difference quotient is just the f of x, which is the y value of the second point, minus the f of a, which is the y value of the first point, divided by x minus a, which is the difference in the two x values. So delta y over delta x, that represents the average rate of change. Now if we wanted to represent the instantaneous rate of change, we take the limit and as you see, as x gets closer to a, f of x gets closer to f of a, and this limit represents the instantaneous rate of change. Now obviously, x cannot equal a, because if x is equal to a, we'd have the f of a minus the f of a, which is zero, divided by a minus a, which is also zero, we would have an indeterminate form. As long as we're looking at the limit as x approaches a, we don't have to worry about the fact that this would be division by zero. As delta x goes to zero, this would be division by zero here. That's why we're taking the limit. Let's see, here's an example. And for the function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 24x plus 7, find the average rate of change of the function on the interval from 3 to x. Geometrically here, I have this parabola, which is this quadratic function f of x. Then I have a line secant to it on the interval between x equals 3 and x equals x. So basically, I'm looking at the slope of that red secant line that intersects the function f, the parabola, in those two places. Let's go ahead and find the slope of that secant line. It's going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're finding f bar a of x. So this is the average rate of change between a and x of the function f. And it's just going to be delta y over delta x, the change in the y values, which is f of x minus f of a, divided by the change in x values, which is x minus a. In this case, the value of a is equal to 3, so we'll get this. The f bar 3 of x, the average value between 3 and x of this function, is going to be equal to the f of x, which is this expression, minus the f of a, which in this case is the f of 3, because 3 is the value of a, and that's divided by x minus a, or x minus 3. Now, we're going to simplify all of this on the inside here, and we get this expression. We distribute this negative and combine all the like terms, and that's going to amount to a negative 45. I notice in the numerator, I can actually factor the GCF of negative 3 out of all of these. So I factor out a negative 3. And once I've factored out that GCF, I'm going to proceed to factor x squared minus 8x plus 15 into two binomials. Those two binomials are going to be x minus 3 and x minus 5. So I notice here that I have a rational expression and the denominator can actually be canceled out, which means it's a removable discontinuity or a hole in the graph. So if I cancel that out, I'm going to get negative 3 times x minus 5 as the expression with the x minus 3 canceled out. So the function negative 3 times x minus 5 agrees with this expression, negative 3 times x minus 3 times x minus 5 over x minus 3 everywhere except at 3. So if I want to know the limit, for instance, of this expression, I can just plug the number that I'm trying to find the limit as x approaches into this. 
So that's going to come into play if I want to find instead of the average rate of change to find the instantaneous rate of change, I'm going to use the function that I just created for the average rate of change. If I let x approach 3, then the difference quotient for the secant line, the slope of the secant line is going to approach what's called the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take the limit as x approaches 3. We're going to use this symbol to represent the instantaneous rate of change at 3, which is the slope of this tangent line. That instantaneous rate of change is just the limit as x approaches 3 of that same difference quotient we just calculated, f bar 3 of x. I just do that limit as x approaches 3 of this expression. So all I have to do is plug this 3 in to find this limit. Turns out the limit is equal to 6, which means the slope of that tangent line is equal to 6. The other difference quotient, we're going to describe the distance from one x value to the other as h, and in that way, the second x value is going to be a, which is the initial x value, plus the distance between them, h, which means the y value of the second point is the f of a plus h. So here I have the y value of the first point, the f of a, that's the value a there, that's the ordered pair associated. And here I have the y value of the second point, the f of a plus h, associated with this point that has this x value a plus h. Here's the difference quotient. This is the average rate of change is represented by the slope of this secant line here. And all I need to do then is do y2, which is the second y value, this, minus y1, which is the first y value, and that's going to be divided by x2 minus x1. That's a plus h minus a, which is just h. So this is the difference quotient described in terms of the initial x value, a, and the distance between the two x values, h. So if we wanted to find the slope of a tangent line, we would let h approach 0, so the distance between the two points would go to zero, and the secant line would then approximate a tangent line. I'm just making the distance between the two points shrink. So as the distance between the two points shrink, one point gets closer to the other, and the secant line will approximate a tangent line. So this would be the slope of the tangent line. This would be the slope of the secant line. This is the average rate of change on an interval. This is the instantaneous rate of change at a specific point. So let's go ahead and do this example again using this new difference quotient. So in this case, we're describing where we start, 3, and the second x value is where we start plus how much we change, the distance between the two x values. So it's 3 and 3 plus h as my interval on the x-axis. So that means my second x value is 3 plus h, and the second y value is the f of 3 plus h. Let's go ahead and find the difference quotient for that expression. So here's the difference quotient. Here's a, the, a, the value of a is 3, and h is going to be the variable. I plug in 3 plus h into the original function, and I get this negative 3 times 3 plus h squared, plus 24 times 3 plus h, and then plus 7. So that's the f of a plus h, where a is the number 3. And then I'm just going to find the f of a, which is, once again, just the f of 3. So I'm plugging 3 in for all the x's here. 3 goes there, 3 goes there. And there I have the f of a plus h minus the f of a, all divided by h. This is that second version of the difference quotient where h is the distance between the two x values. All right, now let's simplify this. That's going to be negative 27 and 72 plus 7. And I also foil this. 3 plus h squared is 3 plus h times 3 plus h. And then after this, we're just going to distribute all of this now. So after we distribute, we get this. And after the distribution, we're going to combine all the like terms. So a bunch of stuff cancels out here. 
and we are left with just this expression after everything cancels. So notice they both have a factor of negative 3h. So I'm going to factor out that negative 3 and an h, and I'm going to get this expression. And then I notice that the h's cancel. So I get negative 3 times h minus 2. So this is the slope of a secant line. This is the average rate of change on the interval from 3 to 3 plus h. So if I know how far the second x value is from 3, I can plug it in here and find the slope of a secant line. Let's take a look at finding the instantaneous rate of change when a is equal to 3. Based on the previous discussion, that's just going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of this new difference quotient. And that's just the limit as h approaches 0 of that difference quotient that we already found. Here we go, we have f prime of 3, which is the notation for the slope of, which is the notation for the instantaneous rate of change at 3. And that's just going to be the limit of this difference quotient that we just found. Well, it, as h goes to 0, this is just going to be 0, and we get negative 3 times negative 2, which is 6. But we've already known that the slope of the tangent line at the point where x is equal to 3 was 6.